Welcome back. We're going to be doing a cute little card here. And I have a printable, traceable, for all members on Patreon and my YouTube membership. And you can find that in either the community uh, page or on uh, Patreon. So if you want to download that and play along, that would be great. Uh, this is the traceable. And you can make these any color you want. And this is uh, what it looks like printed out. I'm going to be doing mine on cart. This is cardstock. And it's fairly smooth. And we're going to try this out. Because this is going to be more about pen and, and an ink and wash of watercolor. So it's not uh, multiple layers per se of watercolor. So we're going to just draw this out. Now, if you want, you can uh, download this. This is a traceable. So if you have uh, any kind of hmm, graphite paper, that type of thing, you can use that. Um, I have some Sorel graphite paper. I'm just going to put it on here. Where am I? I want to leave a little bit of a, of a space on the bottom if you want to put any kind of sediment sentiment <laughs> that looks a little right make sure it's on the right way and I'm gonna take a pen hey Joan good to see you how you been doing probably busy it's the uh, Holiday season coming on. These are so simple to do. There's not much really. Um, you could probably do these yourself, make them up. You can have them holding all kinds of things. You know, these are just references. You could add stuff to them. Um, I just thought they were cute. This guy is a little different than your typical gnome. So he's got he's got long legs, so. <laughs> There's no real wrong way of doing these guys. If you want to make them with legs or without, sometimes you just see the tops of the shoes under the beard type of thing. This guy's going to have Legs in an arm and very simple hands, just kind of like a little oval. So anyone can do that. This one's got a little wavy top on. And his legs. He's got, they're gnomes, so. They got weird clothes, right? So these guys are wearing tights. We'll put them, I don't know, maybe we'll have polka dots. And he's holding a wine glass because he's getting ready to celebrate. And he's leaning up against the candy cane.
And there's a couple cardinals hanging out with them. Just cute. You could change that to chickadees or uh, whatever birds in your area. Chickens, whatever. These are just ideas, but I thought they would be cute for a card. And they're kind of wonky birds, so it's <clears throat> more illustrative style than uh, uh, realistic. So make them however you want. There's no wrong way of doing these guys. Let's put his beard in. And you can make his beard whatever color you want to. I think I got everything in there. Hey, Dorothy. Now there's a little bit of um, excess. So all you have to do is take an eraser and you can erase this. That's the nice thing about this type of tracing paper is it doesn't have a wax in it. A lot of um, graphite papers have wax in that and it's a little more difficult to erase it. Hey, Nettie, Dot, Cat, good to see you. So I'm just going to erase. And if you're planning on making a bunch of these cards, you could just paint one and then photocopy or just photocopy the traceable and print them. And that way you don't have to worry about uh, erasing any smudges and stuff like that off. All right, so there's our little traceable. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you guys in so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. Okay, that'll do. And I have my water beside me. And I have my brushes. Let's see what brush do I want to use. Fairly small, so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stick to a smaller brush. So I have here a silver black velvet, and this is a number six, and this one is a number four. You can also get twos and um a zero in these, I believe, too. This is just going to be a very simple, easy, anyone can do these. And I think I'm going to use a, let's see, what do I have here? A number three or that's too small. Number three, zero three. And this is a uh, microperm, and they are waterproof, so they're not going to move. So you want to make sure you find something that is waterproof. Kathy, the system wouldn't let me download the tracing. Said I. Okay, just a minute said I had to ask you oh you know why you are in Dorothy Gibbs I don't think you have two channels Dorothy try your other one because that this your Dorothy Gibbs isn't subscribed to me I think let me go on YouTube and see I'm not um, on YouTube right now Let's see.
Yeah, that's what it is. You're not subscribed as Dorothy Gibbs. Use your other one, um, Pandora's Box, because you're subscribed to me on the membership through that. So it's for all membership people. And it's only $2.99 a month and you get all of the traceables from the past. How long have I been doing this? Two, two years? And you can cancel at any time. So let's trace this first. I'm going to trace this. I want it uh, fairly bold, I guess you could say. Or you could do it sketchy, whatever you want to do. There's many ways of doing a line and wash drawing. So if you want to put the line in first, you can do that. Or you can also paint and then put the line in later. Uh, I like doing it this way because I'm able to... Um, let's see, I'm able to um, erase this. The uh, graphite or whatever this is um, traceable that I used. Because I don't want to have all of this line in. Some of it I don't mind. But I like to have a little bit more control on the thickness with my pen instead of this pencil. But if you don't want to use a pen, you can use the pencil too. Just make it yours. You could add things. You can take away things you don't like. Maybe you don't like the birds in here. I think they're cute. I'm going to put knobbly knees on them. And I'll put some little toes on there. <laughs> uh, we'll put a little... wing and just kind of I like sketchy stuff too so play with them make a few in different ways that way you go get to see what kind of style you kind of gravitate to it doesn't have to be what I do it could be totally different The same happened to me, Dorothy Gibbs, Linda. Um, are you? Um, did you try it? Let me know, so I'll have to go into my um, settings and change something if that's the case. If you guys are all still having problems, let me know. Sometimes I forget to change the uh, permissions. I did mine on Patreon. You did yours on Patreon and it didn't go through? Here. Let me see. Uh, just hold on a minute. Uh, 
Let's see. Loading. Rest oh, that's what I did. I restricted it. Okay. Just hold on. I'm going to fix that. Okay, now try it. See if it will work. So I changed it. I just ch I just changed it. See if it works now. I had it restricted. Sorry, guys. I'm kind of busy today trying to do too many things at once. <laughs> You know how it is. Get going, doing things. It's a busy season. I don't think I need a new um, A new link, but let me know if you do. I'm just going to do a few little rough edges on the beard and maybe eh, I'll put some marks along the bottom here. Along his chin, maybe. Maybe we'll give him a, I'm going to put a little bit of a mustache in here. It worked awesome. Thanks, Kath, uh, Linda, for letting me know. So what do you think we should make his tights? Polka dots? You can change it up. You can change it for whatever color too. You don't have to make it the color I had. So after you're done inking, just give it a shot of hot air so it dries that ink and then you can erase it. just want to take that some of those marks off bit on the dark side but sometimes that's kind of cool though um, messy looking I like it <laughs> kind of grungy all right so we're gonna do the little gnome and I think I, I'm gonna do his hat green I think I'm gonna match his his um, his little top. It's gonna to be green, and his hat. I'm gonna have green with maybe some different colors on it. Hey, Devin. So this is just uh, a regular stock cardstock that I got from Staples. So it's nothing fancy. Uh, now it's not going to move 
the watercolor like you would in watercolor paper. So if you like that look, um, then use watercolor paper. This is just going to be something very simple. Um, I'm going to use this bright green. I want them nice and bright. If you don't have watercolor and you're going to use it on cardstock, you could use a watered down acrylic and it should be fine. Uh, the only reason you don't water acrylic down too much is when you're using a canvas or something that you have primed because then it's it sits on top of that primed surface. So when you water something like acrylic down and put it on a prime surface, if it's watered down too much, what happens is the um, it breaks down, the components break down in the paint and it's unable to adhere to anything. But when you're doing that on paper, it's different because it's soaking into the fibers of the paper because it's not primed. And therefore it's not gonna flake off or anything. So it's kind of like working on uh, a watercolor because it's going into if that makes any sense. All right, so I said I was going to have his top the same color. Now with illustration, depending on what type of illustration you like to paint, it doesn't have to have a lot of detail either. It could be very simple. Um, so that I leave up to you if you want to just have it colored like it's very flat looking, which a lot of people like in some illustrations. You can do that. You don't have to add any kind of dimension to it. I like dimension in mine, so I'm going to probably do that. Yeah, there's, there's so many ways of using your uh, different types of supplies. So a lot of people, they don't think about um, using their acrylics as watercolor look. But you can. You just have to use it on paper and not prime the paper. All right. So the ho ho ho, I think I'm going to do that in, I think I'm going to do it in red and gold. So I'm going to use, let's see, this one is alizarin crimson, and I want it fairly thick. So I'm not going to put it on my palette. I want it fairly thick in pigment. Now, you can be messy with it also because this type of illustration, a lot of times you will see artists uh, do wash and ink kind of in a messy way where it goes outside the lines. And that can be really effective looking too. So that's why I always say play with your supplies. Do it more than once and see what style you like. Maybe you haven't figured out what your style is yet. And that's a really good way of, of figuring it out by doing multiples. And cards is a great thing because it's not a, a really long detailed thing. You're They're quick. I have got the traceable now. Okay. Oh, great. Dot. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. They're cute. And you could have him holding, uh, instead of a wine glass, maybe he was holding a Christmas bell or mm, a cookie or a present, whatever. Just make them the way you want. So the cardinal's going to be red also. So I'm going to put these guys in. 
I'm going to keep them the same uh, red color. He's going to have a little bit of, of uh, black around his eye, but I'll just put this red in for now and then uh, put the black in once this is dry. Cute. These are so quick and easy to do. Anyone can do these. And they, they are cute to give out as cards or even make up one of these and use them as a tag. So just make them smaller when you, you're printing. They would be cute. We may as well do the candy cane too. So let's, I'm just going to base coat the candy cane in. I'm going to make the candy cane a little bit dimensional by adding some shadows and highlights. The nice thing about watercolor too is that it's transparent. So you still are able to keep those lines if you go over them. These would be cute in uh, journals and that type of thing also if you want to make tags. Maybe you're doing your Christmas uh, daily. These, these would be really cute as part of your Christmas journal. It could be something maybe you want to have it for journaling on. So the back would be used for your journaling. You could also, maybe he's holding a number. That would be cute. One more. So we're going to add a little bit of shadow to this. So I'm not going to bother doing white, of course, because the candy cane has got white and red on it. Uh, I want to dry that. I don't want other colors bleeding into each other. easy little card or Christmas tags, whatever you want to use them for. make these leaves here a little bit darker so I'm just going to use the um, permanent sap green by Windsor and Newton it's a little bit of a different green more more olivey a little bit and we'll have some berries on there could make this um, Christmas bells if you wanted to also doesn't have to be berries. And he's got a glass of wine. So let's make a little bit of a darker wine glass here. It's got a nice rosé. <laughs> I guess I should tilt that because it's tilted, right? See, that's my crazy artist brain working here. Can't get away from it. <laughs> All right. And let's make a little bit of a... So let's get some sienna. A little bit of sienna and a little bit of red.
and we'll make a nice nice color of skin color you can make the skin color whatever you want so his hands will be the same he's not wearing mittens but yours could and I'm gonna make I've got some bluish gray here on my palette and I'm just gonna use that for his beard so just a little bit of shadowing more or less along his um, mustache just along the top part of his hat a little bit of a shadow there and just a little bit on the bottom part and just kind of sweeping it in you can add a few strokes Real thin strokes. Like that. What kind of brush are you using? This one is a silver black velvet, it's called. Um, you'll probably see a lot of people use these. These are awesome because they have such a beautiful fine point. They don't hold excess amount of water, just right amount. And uh, I find they're probably one of the best ones I've used. And they're, they're not too badly priced, although they have gone up in price. Um, there's also this one, same manufacturer. It's called a, a Golden. Um, um, natural blend it's called and it's by silver and these uh i'm not sure if you can get them on amazon or not i got this one on the the brush guys they have them they're a really good price if you're in the us uh, the brushguys.com is the place to go because their prices are unbelievable uh, watercolor only? Uh, well, I use these only for watercolor, yes. They're very soft. They're The uh, golden one is a little bit more stiffer. So if you wanted to, you could use those for acrylic. Um, it depends on how you like to, to paint. If you like to use a lot of water, you, you could probably use these with acrylics also. If you're using, say... Um, a fluid acrylic or inks that type of thing they would work it's just that uh, you really have to make sure you give these really good clean for them to stay the way they are with acrylics um, they they tend to go into the ferrule of your brush right down in here and that makes them splay apart so you got to really make sure you don't get too much paint up near the ferrule if you want this point to stay pointy. <laughs> All right, let's finish this little top here. And then we'll put some, I don't know, let's put polka dots, stripes, although the candy cane striped. So maybe, polka dots. I'm going to do his shoes. Maybe his shoes will be hmm, black. Sure. Why not? You can finish these off however you want. If you want to use more colored pencils, you could do that. You could also get out your brush markers. These would be great for using markers. They're cute. All right, so let's do a little bit of shading. And so we're going to use the same uh, red, which was alizarin crimson. So I'm just going to make a little spot down here 
with this color. And then I'm going to darken it. So you can darken it by either adding a really dark, uh, like an umber color. We'll darken it. Or if you have a black, you could do that. Um, you could also use your opposite on the color wheel, which will will darken it, which is a green. So if I add a little bit of green and then a little bit of this color, it gets into the more of the red. You have to be or the browns. So you have to be careful not to put too much in because then you'll lose that red color. But I want a little bit darker. And then what, what, what I'm going to do is uh, just along the one side here, I want that candy cane to be a little bit darker. Just for a little bit of uh, shadowing effect. So under here would be a little bit darker. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit under here too because he's leaning up against there. So that would be a little darker also. I'm not getting too crazy with it, but a little bit. And then the little uh, birds here, they would have probably a little bit darker color underneath their tummy, maybe along the wing. You could also use more pen work if you wanted to also. You know, they're just tiny little guys, so they don't need a whole lot. I'm going to make a little bit of a darker again. And the, the ho ho ho, just want to darken underneath H's. Just give it a little bit of dimension. Doesn't have to be a lot. And underneath here, maybe right here, there's a, a little bit of spray of, of holly or whatever on his the tip of his hat. And then I'm going to put some on his shoes here. Just underneath. And maybe a smidgen in his wine glass a little bit. Just near the bottom where it would be a little bit darker. All right, now it's hat. I'm going to switch to, I have a little bit of green on my palette here. And I'm just going to use that. And I got a fair amount of water on my brush. But because the pigment is fairly dark, that's all I really need. So right around this area here. Underneath that little curve on his hat. A little bit shadowed. Same with this part would be shadowed. And just along his nose and his beard would be shadowed because it's kind of rolled. The hat would have a little bit of thickness to it. And under his arm would it be a little darker. Long as hat, maybe like that, just along the side of his beard, too. And his little top here would have, I'm just going to do a little bit dabbing along this beard just to give that a little bit of shadow. And then when you're seeing, um, rises in fabric the top the rise of it 
is always lighter and the dips are always darker. So you can put a little bit of, that would be his leg there. So he's got a little bit of um, shadow in there. So here's a rise, there's a dip. Depends on, you know, how much do you want to put in as far as detail? You don't have to do all of this. Now he would have a little bit of shadow along the edge there of his leg. And I'm going to put a bit on both sides of his leg because it's got a tube shape. So the shadow would be along the both sides of this one. But this one, probably the, the sunlight is shining down on it, so it would be fairly light on the top part. So I'm not going to do it there. But let's put a little bit just on this part of his hat. And there's a bump here, so it would be shadowed a little bit there. And let's see. There would be a little bit there. Maybe there, here. Like so. All right, so, and his little nose, you can just add a little bit more of the same color you used for the skin tone. And just put a little bit of a shadow under the bottom part of his nose. Just follow the shape like that. Now the white, white isn't always just white. It's got a bit of usually grayish color in it. So we, we can um, just put a little bit of gray down one side. And it's the same side we already shadowed with the, the red so we want a little bit there Ooh, that ran a little bit there here and i'm going to give him a shadow underneath him so his hands there and little bit of a shadow where he's sitting. So it's a lot darker the closest to the object. So always put a little bit darker right along the object and then a little lighter as it goes out. Like that. You can make it as darker if you want yours to be really dark. You could do that too. Um, now we could have the H. Maybe the H is coming out like this. The O would be shadow. It's usually exaggerated too. It wouldn't be as uh, the same size. It'd be a little bit stretched. Okay. So if we could put a little bit more in here. Just a little bit. Maybe have this candy cane shape. Like that. A bit darker. Like that. Uh, let's see. What else? I've already gotten the page dirty. Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were going to put uh, dots on them. So, I think I will put I'll dry this first, and then I'm going to use my pen again.
great. So I'm going to put, let's see, I'm going to put little circles on his hat. And I'm going to have little circles on his stockings. So you can have different, you could do whatever you want. Maybe you want stars, stripes. Mm, what else? Maybe he's got, uh, let's put these leaves on his hat um, I'm gonna just I think I'm just gonna fill this in black this little area here now you, I think I'm just gonna do it black Actually, I'm going to just color these in black. Now you could make them whatever color you want. You could get out a paint marker and do dots. You could make stars. I think I want black. You could do white. Whatever. And just going to scribble a little bit. Just a, a rough. I think it needs it. Well, I'm going to make those berries yet. Maybe he's got some. Little scribbles in there. His hat. Maybe his stockings or okay. And I think he's gonna have red on his red and green. So I'm just gonna put a few little dots in here and then the rest will be green. permanent green here and there like that and a little bit of red on the berries here okay now let's get some gold. Gotta have some gold, right? I want bright gold. So I'm just gonna use this, the darkest one I have here. Now these have to you know, soak in a little bit for them to get nice and thick. Doesn't take long though. I like these. These were gifted to me by Jilly. And I'm just going to put in the gold. You could probably use a gold pen if you wanted, or how about foil? Or sparkles, too, would work. If you've got any gold gl um, glitter glue, would be cute. Or embossing gold is another one. You just don't have to stick with uh, watercolor. Use what you have. That's what I believe. You can always adapt your stuff. with what you have. So there's a little bit of gold, a little bit of shimmer. And I think I'm gonna put their bird's eyes in a little bit darker. 
and his beak. And they have that little bit of um, black around their eyes. I'm just going to put a little bit there. I'm going to try and leave a smidgen of of the red just so that you know it's a I think that's the way they look <laughs> okay and let's see what they got here I could put Merry Christmas there or I could have it down there This one, happy holidays. Um, it's cute. What's this one? Wish you a magical season. That's cute. Could I fit that in? That might work. Let's do that one. I'm not a stamper. This is just something cute. I don't know where these stamps are from, but there is thousands of sediment stamps you can probably find. Oh, I guess I should, let's see if I can clean this off so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> it's me, multi-purposing. need a pellet knife. Where is it? Sorry if this bothers you. see it. All right. And I think I'm going to splatter it too. That's the good thing about doing these cards. You can always splatter if you make a mistake somewhere like um, Okay, Devin, have a good day. There we go. I think that matches that one really well, actually. And then we just get our brush and wet it. Take some of the colors. And you can just splatter here and there. Some of that color. Maybe some of the green. Try it. Make sure your splats are really good and dry. 
You don't want to smudge them. All right. I think he's done. He's cute. So very simple. And now all you have to do is you could scan this or take it to a, a um, staples or something like that and make a bunch of them. You don't have to do all of them yourself. And if you want to give them a little extra after you've uh, duplicated them on cardstock or whatever you're going to use, so you print them. You can always take your uh, embossing powder if you want to make them look like they're a little more homemade and do the, uh, say the O's in gold and put a little bit of embossing powder on them and they'll look like you've made every single one of them. No one will know. <laughs> so, and it saves time because who, who has uh, excess time right now? I don't. And you could uh, make up a few of them, different ones. So I hope this will help you and make these into sh shorter or real small ones. And you could use them as gift tags too. So I hope you enjoyed this. It was a quick one, but you don't have to get all really detailed in quick cards like this and these are fun to do um you know if you're if you do have the time and just want to have a little bit of me time creating then these are a great one to do very low stress and that's what we need we don't want to have a christmas meltdown <laughs> so enjoy yourself have some fun with these. Change them up by the colors or adding different things to them. Um, just have fun with them. All right. So uh, if you didn't know, there is a traceable for this one if you didn't want to draw it out. And it's available to all my members on Patreon and YouTube membership. And I want to thank you all for supporting my art there. That is fantastic. I couldn't do it without you. So have fun with this, and we will uh, see you on Thursday. Probably a snowman, um, a stacking snowman. You'll have to wait and see. It's one of my own designs. <laughs> so we'll see you guys later, and have a fantastic evening. Bye for now.